we go. That's you waiting on? Yeah, man. You gotta. You gotta. Stay right there with you. I got you. I got you. Get a new producer this year. Mm -hmm. 2018. You're gonna lose a lot if you do. I ain't losing nothing, bro. <laughs> I'm not losing anything. We, we, I'm gonna use proper grammar. Anything. I'm not losing anything. They want to keep it pretty much. Wait, I see right people waiting to come on, man, and you. You messing around. Yeah, most of them got Twitter on them, man. You got sound? Let me see. Yeah. I'm gonna turn up so the people can hear, man. That's what I'm saying, man. Thumb up. Stay right there with you. Keep going. Hey, what's up with all these microphones, man? This one ain't on. Yeah, it ain't on yet. That's the one you're using on. This is one what? You're using now. Why didn't you turn it on? You don't need it on yet. You got the intro coming on. You don't want to talk to the intro, do you? Man, you get more and more like Donald Trump. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, man. You thought they had them tendencies, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you get more and more. <laughs> well, I knew I wasn't going to say nothing, man, because we got guests. But I wasn't going to say, oh my God, turn them out, man. Man. How you turn the mic I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I'm going to say it again because we're going to end. Good evening, good evening. Man. <laughs> good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. This is, this is your host, Joaquin Thompson, with the Daily Bread Radio Show. And we're coming to you live from... <laughs> I want to say it's so sad, man. Say it, man. Say it. Say it. Snailville. <laughs> I want to say Atlanta so bad, man. We're going to have to move. I it's keep coming. telling you, man. We got to... It ain't that far. I mean, because right when you come down 78, you see the sign say Snailville. So, yeah, yeah. man, we need to... We need to move, man. It'd sound better if we was coming from Atlanta. A little east, move back, just go a little east. No, oh, I mean, people don't even, I mean, the people on the air, they be like, Snailville. People be asking me, where's Snailville? They be like, Snailville? Like, where is that at? We're going to put Snailville on the map, man. I know, man. Okay. Once we get the mayor in here, I start to call City Hall the other day and see if we can get the mayor. I'm going to get the mayor of Snailville on yeah. here, man. We're going to make this thing real, you know, make it pop real good, man. But uh, good evening, good evening. This is Joaquin Thompson again, the host of the Daily Bear Radio Show. And for all of you that are joining for the first time, this show is about personal finance from a spiritual perspective. And notice I didn't say from a religious perspective. We don't do religion on the Daily Bread radio show. And the reason we don't do religion is because religion, once you start dealing with religion, you can get really convoluted into different things about disbelief and I'm Christian and you Baptist and I'm, you know, Hindu and Jew. it's just one source and that's God. So our belief on our show is we do everything from a spiritual perspective, knowing that everything, every religion on the planet, everything comes to one point and that's God. So there's no need for us to get into who's right, who's wrong from a religious standpoint, but we can't do it from a spiritual standpoint. Now from time to time I will why are you putting tears in there? Man. Anyway, it, man, you throwing me off. Stand, don't see much talking, man. Stay in the lane, man. Stay in the lane. You're getting more and more like Trump. Oh, see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <it's> like, <laughs> I'm not, and I mean Donald. Donald J. Trump, man. You get more and more like him, man. Man. I ain't tell y'all, man. Look, I start tweeting. Yep. I, I, I don't even supposed to be drinking all that. You a tweeter? Look, you a tweeter? I, I, I started tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand it? I go. I, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm figuring it out. Oh, trust me, I'm I'm studying. But um, I had something funny happen. I was I started tweeting. I'm tweeting different people, and mm -hmm. yeah. you know. So first, I'm following, following, following. That's nah. Let me stop following, following so many people. Let mm -hmm. me start learning how to yeah. respond or, mm -hmm. or send something, send a tweet out. Like, yeah. What do I tweet about? Like, what's on my mind? Mm -hmm. Man, how about yesterday? Donald Trump sent out a tweet. Uh oh. <laughs> and I responded to <laughs> I responded to the President of the United States I sent a tweet to the President of the United States So I was like, hey, I'm, I'm good I can never do that with Like a past president <laughs> don't, Oh, don't worry, because we in Snailville He'll never find us out 
This is like we in a bunker. <laughs> if I was in Atlanta, they got yeah, us. They got you. They but got you. Yeah. Still, man, I don't even think that's on the federal map. It don't come up. It don't come up. It'll say Atlanta. Atlanta proper, but um, and again, just a little time to get away. Man, we got an exciting show today. We have a um, dynamic guest on, and um, she's gonna come on and tell us about her venture. Um, the real, she has a new magazine mm. that's gonna be launched in August this month. Okay. It's called Real Women Atlanta. Wow, that's huge. And the magazine is about it's similar to what we do here. It's about everyday people, mm -hmm. everyday women that are being highlighted, showcased in her magazine. But every person that's in the magazine has a story behind it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just glitz and glamour, it's not celebrity and oh, you're going to get some of that too, mm -hmm. but you're going to get some realness. Okay. Some of the things that we talked about previously on the Daily Bread Radio Show because everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a history, everybody has a few, but everybody got a story, but it's just hearing that story. Mm -hmm. And um, me and my oldest daughter was having this conversation earlier today. Everybody has a story, but sometimes when you're telling your story, and somebody hears your story, it gives them the courage to just be open about what's going on in their life. So it you know, and it could be something that's you know really you know not favorable, like mm -hmm. abuse, or it could be neglect, or it could be bullying, or it mm -hmm. could be just having a hard time, you know, in, you know, high school, you know, self esteem, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But just hearing other people talk about it. Sometimes it gives you the courage to say, hey, you know what, me too. Mm -hmm. And we've been seeing a lot of that, you know, recently with the Me Too movement. Yeah. Yeah. All of the women that came out at the SB Awards mm -hmm. that um, were, you know, sexually abused. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's just a lot of that going on in the country. But I think part of that, too, is not just the Me Too movement, but I think now people and the, the way technology is, we have these different platforms mm -hmm. and access to different things that we don't have to go through these proverbial gatekeeper. Because yeah. historically, you would have to go through, if you wanted to go through CBS, NBC, mm -hmm. and they, you had to go to them and say, you know, get a green light on the story. Like, is this a good story? Oh, we don't want to do that. Yeah. And then the people who are the gatekeepers are the very people that's doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like asking a, a wolf, right, to report on the head house. He ain't going to do it, right? But now, you got stuff now. Twitter, I see mm -hmm. videos on Twitter. I keep saying Twitter. Twitter my thing now. Yeah, I love Twitter. I, I, I see I mean, I love Twitter. You know, I love Twitter. Look, I got a couple because we can't take a lot of time because we got Charmaine is in the audience and we're gonna bring up. But you know, the thing I like about Twitter mm -hmm. is you can get into other conversations. Yeah, you can go other places. Like we're on Facebook. Facebook, you you kind of almost contain to your group, even if you got a large group, mm -hmm. two thousand, ten thousand, fifteen, twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But you really can't get outside your group. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's so, like so either know. people or your friends or. But somebody could be right over here having a conversation about something. You can't get in that conversation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But on Twitter, <laughs> be I don't know. That, look, I don't know if that's good or bad. It knows it. But boy, look, I done been, <laughs> I done been all over the world, man. I done been in South Africa. I'm mm -hmm. telling people like, yeah, we, hey, we struggling in the U.S. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to people about Iran. I'm talking about the Denar. I'm talking about everything. Mm -hmm. Tied it back to personal finance, and it's so funny because I'm like, I can jump in conversations all over the world. But on Facebook, I'm kind of limited, you know? Who is that, Oprah? Yeah. Oh, man. Don't oh, worry, we got some. Charmaine bigger than Oprah. Come on, She's gonna come on here and tell you that. Woo! See? We got a bomb. Say We're gonna drop a bombshell on you today, Raheem. <laughs> Put your headphones on, man, pay attention. <laughs> Stop playing around. <laughs> Be serious. Be serious, man. <laughs> I'm joking around. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Twitter's been my thing. And um, one thing, a couple things I want to talk about mm -hmm. real quick before we bring up Charmaine. And uh, first one is fear. Mm -hmm. And I want to get these two things I'm going to talk about. First one is fear. The second one is savings. I'm going to give you all a little input uh, on both of those real quick. And then we're going to bring Charmaine up. The first one is fear. Now, the thing about fear is this. This is something I need everybody in the listening audience everybody that's tuning in, and everybody that may even come back and listen to the rebroadcast, or when you, you know, you might want to watch this show over the weekend. Even if you're watching it as a recording, this is something I want you to think about. Do not, under any circumstance, let fear run your life. Mm -hmm. 
Do not, under any circumstance, let fear run your... And fear, a lot of times when you talk about fear, people think about being scared of something, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're going to be harmed. But I'm going to tell you something that's more powerful than being harmed, like physical harm or being mentally harmed by somebody. Something that's more powerful than that is your own insecurities about something, right? Too short, too tall, too old, too fat, too thin, not cute enough, too cute, whatever it is, whatever that, whatever that, that it is, mm -hmm. sometimes we can go a whole lifetime, an entire lifetime, and not deal with it. And we mm -hmm. put on these different, you know, what I call shades of gray, or personas, or masks, because then we become who we think, right? Who mm -hmm. we think, our friends, our family, other people, who we think they want us to be, or who yeah. we should be, mm -hmm. right? And, it, and I was reading something earlier in an article, and it said, even, you have to get to the point where you're true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Even to the point where somebody asks you to go out to, you know, dinner, like, hey, we're gonna go out and grab some drinks with some friends, what have you. You could be standing in your, in your closet, trying to figure out what you're gonna wear. Mm -hmm. And as you're picking out what you're gonna wear, mm -hmm. you constantly thinking about, what, how am I gonna look to them? Yeah. Like, is this gonna make me look good? Or is this going to make me, am I going to be underdressed or am I going to be overdressed? Am I going to be dressed for, do I look like an executive in this or do I look like a bum? I mean, we'll run all that through our mind like a squirrel in an attic, yep. right? Mm. And then what we'll do is what? We'll pick the clothes that we think, they think we should wear. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of saying, you know what, man, I'm wearing flip-flops. Mm -hmm. I don't, it, it's just, and then when you show up, guess what? Now you're waiting on them to see what they, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, a one, cool. I picked the right one. Mm -hmm. Or they may say, "Why you wear that? <laughs> what are you that? Why you?" <laughs> I done had that happen a couple times. I'm talking. About, I done been to some stuff, man. I, and I'm, I'm gonna be totally honest. Mm -hmm. I done, hey, I done been to an event. It, it wasn't quite black tie. It was close to black tie. Mm -hmm. And I said, "I ain't putting on all that. I put on some." <laughs> I know my wife gonna be upset, but I'm, I'm gonna tell the story. Man, I wore some khakis and put on some goddamn, some regular, like, casual shoes. I went right up in there. I was acting like I was an executive, mm -hmm. but I went dressed like, I was like, I don't need to, bro, right, this is me. This is who mm -hmm. I am. This, mm -hmm. Y'all know y'all can't compete with me. Yeah. But I went dressed apart, so they're like, oh my God, so you wear khaki? I'm like, yeah, well, I'm like, but you want to wear a suit? I mean, we just eating dinner. They say no. But I'm just saying, um, that fear thing. And that was at McDonald's. McDonald's, listen to you, man, listen to you. Man, you stick, man, I ain't, I, look, we got a guess. Well, I ain't even gonna start on you today. I'm not gonna say nothing. Only thing I'm gonna say, just save it. You wait the next one. I'm gonna do like we used to do when we look. You wait, you wait to, yeah. you wait to see Lee mm -hmm. and see what happens. What you wait to see Lee and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But um, don't let that, I mean, just shake it off. Just, man, shake that fear off. We're getting too old for that. It's so much stuff going on in the world. So many things you can find. I mean, it's just new adventures, new things. But you got to get get outside of that box. And sometimes, it, but if you feel in your, if you feel it right in here, mm -hmm. what I call your your compass. If you feel it in here, like ooh, I don't know if I can do this. That's when you need to do it. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to do it because your inner being is not gonna lie to you. Don't worry about what's going on up here. Just listen to, and, and not even your heart. Right here in the center of your chest, right, mm -hmm. right here, right above your diaphragm. Yeah, cool. When you're doing something right or wrong, this right here, it'll, you'll get a little tingle. Yeah, cool. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, cool. Go ahead. Amen. You a minister? This my ministry. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you're a minister. I ain't saying you tell me you're a minister, man. We're going to talk about that. When I get out the air, we're going to talk about that. You tell me you're a minister. I said, this is my ministry. Man, don't, don't mix words with me. You get just like Donald Trump. <laughs> you get more, see how you twist it? You just need that, man, you get more and more like that. She's she, she trying to be a good uh, uh, um, audience, but she's trying not to laugh. Out trying, but that Brian, she laughing because it's true. <laughs> she's trying to but laugh. listen, man, just, we got to get out of that. Mm -hmm. We got to get away from that. And um, <laughs> like I, I read something, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Something that this millionaire said. He said, if you want to be in the 1%, right? He said, stop doing what the 99% are. Mm -hmm. I was like, woo. So, of course, I came from Twitter. <laughs> 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 I 
Let him let him in like over. That's that's a tweetable moment. That's a tweetable moment. Yeah, I'm gonna tweet that. I'm gonna get all right. Okay. I ain't gonna do it on the air. I'm not gonna tweet on the air. But um, and the second thing I want to talk about, I touch on it today, then we're gonna go deeper next week. Save things. Savings. Mm-hmm. Sounds simple. Sounds simple. Extremely important. Save things. Save things. Now, jokes aside, I have been, because I work in the personal finance space, so while I've been out on Twitter, the thing that was eye-opening to me was this. The things that we have challenges with in the U.S., people all around the world are having the same exact challenge. I mean, all, I have seen stuff from all over the world, people in the U.K., over in South Africa, over in Australia. People are posting things and saying the same thing. How do they expect me to pay X when I have no money? How do they expect us to save when you know gas is higher than it used to be and the, the politicians are taking all of the money and creating all these policies? And I was like, I thought I was, you know, me being naive and being new to the platform, I was like, oh, they're not even in the U.S. This is, oh, this is the U.K. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about passing? What's that little L? What is that? That's pounds. So they said, we don't have... We don't have pounds. And then the one lady commented, she was like, you know, we have, you know, start by saving one rand. So I was like, what's a rand? A rand is like 75 cent US dollars, right? So I was like, but I'm saying all that to say, I want to start a challenge with the breadheads. So we're in August. The day's the 2nd of August. So I'm going to run this for the next 90 days. So for the next 90 days, I'm going to put a challenge out to everybody that are breadheads, everybody that tunes into the show, everybody that are friends of the show. I'm going to challenge everybody to say, not if you already have it, but if you already have it, I'm going to challenge you to save another $1,000. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have it, I'm going to challenge you to save $1,000. Now, we're going to say 90 days, mm-hmm. right? So some people might say, that ain't enough time. That ain't enough time. Well, everybody ain't rich like you. Why you looking like that? Everybody ain't rich like you. What you do ten thousand for you then? Everybody else will do a thousand. Cause I'm just going off the data. The data says, listen. The data says sixty percent mm-hmm. of all Americans. Now it's three hundred million people in the country, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So sixty percent of all of the people in the country have less than a thousand dollars in savings. And then another 21%. So now we're talking about 80% of the population. Mm -hmm. Another 21%, they have zero. Mm -hmm. So $1,000, but if you think about it, most times you don't have an emergency that comes up frequent enough Mm -hmm. that would exceed $1,000. Most times we create the emergency. You know what our emergency is? Oh my goodness, they went on sale. I got to get something. Mm -hmm. We create the emergency. As opposed to putting the money away, leaving it there so when something really does come up, yep. you can address it. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm gonna put that challenge out. We're gonna talk about this for the next three months. The dead the daily bread radio show and the breadheads. We're gonna save a thousand dollars. Everybody and when you get to the point where you save your thousand dollars, you can post out on our page, Daily Bread Radio Show. Yeah. On Facebook. You already did it. Say thousand there. See there you go. You make sure you, you bring your thousand dollars to the studio. That's your challenge. You bring a thousand to the studio. Not ones either. Don't bring no <laughs> Don't bring no, <laughs> Don't bring no thousand ones in here. I'm cool. But with, that's gonna be our challenge. We're gonna talk about that because that's very, very serious. And the last thing that I want to do before we bring up Charmaine is to um, you know every week that we've been on the air, we always have a book of the week. So when, whenever we have a guest, I try to make sure I do the book of the week. Before we get into doing the interview, because sometimes the interview goes right up to the top of the hour, and I want to make sure that you all get this information, excuse me, and we'll post it in the chat. Also, the call in number, 678 381 19, excuse me, 1973. 678 381 1973. And the book of the week this week, like I always say, I'm never going to bring you a book that I haven't read or referenced. Uh, and this is a very good book for everyone. It's called The Personal MBA. A lot of people feel like they need to go to business school. A lot of stuff you can learn just by reading. Just by, you can get all those books and all that content 
and the primary rules just by reading and researching, researching certain books. This is called The Personal MBA, Master the Art of Business, and it's by Josh Kaufman. So this book, what I like about it, and, and one of the quick points that I'm going to share with you all has to do, and you don't have to be in business to, to appreciate this term, it's called return on investment. And everybody wants to get a return on their investment. I don't care if you're paying for private school, if you're putting your kids in private school, what's the return on investment? Hopefully they'll get a scholarship, yeah. right? But if they don't get a scholarship, what's the return on investment? Mm -hmm. What if they don't go to college? Then you're gonna have a very small return on investment. Mm -hmm. So the return on investment, just a quick definition, is the value created from an investment of time or resources. So no, notice it didn't just say of uh, money, it says of time or resources. Most people think of an ROI in terms of currency. If you invest a thousand dollars and you collect a hundred in profit, that's a ten percent return on your investment. So that's pretty straightforward. So anytime that you put money into play, it could be private school. It could be, hey, I'm going to invest in a business. Hey, I'm going to, you know, buy an ad on Facebook. Hey, I'm going to, you know, invest in a gym. You know, you spend money to go to the gym. It's a membership. Mm -hmm. You should be looking for a return on investment. It's, it doesn't just have to come in currency. You may want to lose weight, get told something. You need to have some kind of targeted return on the investment and not just invest and forget about it. You should, and you should be measuring your return on investment because you maybe get 10%, but you really, really need to get 20% because the money that you buy, I'm not going to go into that because I was going to say something else, but we're not going to go into the investing in the business, but just know that return on investment is a, a very good term that everybody can relate to, mm -hmm. whether you buy a house, car, boat, investing in yourself, and there's nothing more important than investing in you. That's the number one. So your return on investment, you know, you can buy a system, um, invest in a franchise, get a Subway, Jimmy John's, what have you, studio, like we have here at DKM Radio, right? You, it's an investment. Equipment, computers, I mean, that's what it is. And hopefully, you get a good return on your investment. So those are the two things that I wanted to share with you all before we brought our guest up. And uh, so the first one is fear. We got to just do away with it. Just deal with it. Do away with it. Second one is savings. And the book of the week, the personal MBA. Master the art of business. Now we're going to bring up our guest. Um, our guest today, her name is Charmaine Moss. She's a native of South Carolina. She has an awesome magazine that she has created. Let me go. Go ahead. Man, you lied. We're going to get you another something, man. We're going to get South you something else to play with. Could you play with that clapping? South Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina. Go ahead, man. Charleston. Charleston. Charlestonia? Yeah, Charlestonia. South Carolina. <laughs> So, um, and she has a, she has a very, very, it, like I said, the magazine that she started, Real Women Atlanta, mm -hmm. the women that she highlights in her magazine, they have a story, but she has a serious story too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to steal away from her story. Yeah. I'm going to let her come up here and join us right up here. And uh, she's going to share some of that with us. So That's now you stuff. can do the claps. That's her stuff. That's her stuff, man. Don't mess with her stuff. Man, this looks like some junk. Man, that's her stuff, bro. All right, bro. Go ahead. Do your thing. Do your thing. Do your thing. Show me. Here we go. Pull the mic. Pull the mic. Pull the mic. Every day we come to you, that's different. Man. There we go. All right, show me. How you doing today? Man, it's so funny. Be funny. You got a microphone turned up, man. A microphone turned up very well. Go ahead. You said very well. Very well. Well, you say <laughs> you acting just like Donald Trump, but not you very well. <laughs> oh well, you was Geechee yesterday. <laughs> let me let me focus, man. Let me focus. Michelle, man, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to the show, and um, definitely wanted you to you know come in. Want to thank the super producer Sandy Pruitt for having you come out yeah. and to come and share your story. So kudos to Sandy. Yes, she's yes. Um, she sent us some tremendous guests. We had the uh, Trinity Awards last week, mm -hmm. and I mean yourself this week. So we we feel very privileged. To have Sandy. I'm going to say Sandy's on our team because she keeps reaching out to me like, hey, you know what? I got a good guest. I got somebody that needs me on your show. I'm like, okay, Sandy, I appreciate it. And every time that she brings somebody, somebody dynamic, somebody's doing something unique, and something that we feel that we can help to spread the word. 
right? That's our that's our obligation is to help get the word out. So with that being said, tell us a little bit about Charmaine Moss. Who's Charmaine Moss and what's going on in Charmaine's world? Well, before you before we go there, I want okay. to say Sandy's on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute now, we go. <laughs> We don't want to go out there, so I'm gonna be, hey, I'm gonna be nice. Okay, Sandy, on your team. I have to give Sandy. Okay, Sandy, on your team. But let me just say something before you go there. Uh huh. Let me just just know that everybody that sat in that seat that she brought, they said the same thing. So Sandy's on all of all of teams. Sandy, and she on my team too. So Sandy is on all of our teams. Okay, good. Okay. Super producer. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate okay. her so much. So oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's a great spirit. Um, and we love Sandy on the Daily Bread Radio Show. And me and Sandy go, ooh, we go back almost 25 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, 1996. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my, yeah, that's my ace. That's my A. Well, I, I, I haven't yeah. known her as long as you have. I, I think I actually met her maybe about five years ago at People TV. Okay, okay. And we were talking about nonprofits. Because right. That was her and Adrian Coleman. That's that's her thing. Yeah. And we lost contact with each other. Okay. And when we uh, did our launch party uh, for the magazine, Sandy saw uh, saw the invite on Facebook, and she attended. And that's when we got reconnected. Oh, that's what's up. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. Man, that's Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. And so she's been, you know, one of our biggest supporters. Okay. Yeah, she does that. I mean, she's definitely selfless, and. Um, She's a unique individual from that standpoint, so we appreciate everything that she has done and Absolutely. will do in the future for both of us. Absolutely. I guess I'll put it that way, for both of us. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us about Charmaine. Well, um, like you said, I'm originally from Charleston, South okay. Carolina. Uh, I've been here uh, in the Atlanta area for about 34 years. Mm. Yeah, I've been here for, for a while. I'm a, I'm a peach now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I okay. consider myself to be a peach now. Okay. Um, and um, we were talking off air. You know, when I first came to Atlanta, I, um, I got a job, like most people do when they come. Um, but, you know, the, the company sent me to training. And I remember the first week of training, just looking out the window, thinking there's got to be more than this. Mm. Whoa. I actually mm. stayed on that job for maybe two months. Mm. And the rest is history. <laughs> I've, I've, so you... been, I've been on my own ever mm. since, you mm. know. And uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I've truly been blessed with great opportunities. Mm. I knew that there were... Some things that I did, I wasn't even qualified to do. Mm. Um, but doors were just doors of opportunities yeah. were just open for me. So I'm really grateful for that. Praise God. Um, I have, um, I've owned my own real estate company. Wow. Didn't have a real estate license. Whoa. <laughs> and you owned the company. <laughs> but I owned the company. Yeah. So um, God gave me the idea. Mm -hmm. He said mm -hmm. to incorporate the real estate company and hire a broker. Ooh. Ah. That's a power move. Wow. It is. <laughs> it we did get the license. <laughs> you said open the company and hire a broker. When you, uh, when you okay. stop and you think about it, um, when you get your real estate license now, and, and I actually went to real estate school, mm -hmm. I passed it, mm -hmm. and um, five years later I decided, okay, maybe I do want to sell real mm -hmm. estate. Mm -hmm. So I called the board and asked if I could still take the state exam. They said, sure. I took a cram course, went, took the state exam, passed it, and they asked me, the examiner asked, uh, where do you want us to send your license? And I thought about it, well, mm -hmm. everyone that would get my license, I would work for them, mm -hmm. and they would take a part of my commission. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. So, I told her I would have to call back and let them know. I never did it. So one, uh, one afternoon, I was having lunch with one of my girlfriends mm -hmm. and ran into an old friend of mine who uh, had been a real estate broker with Remax. And he said to me, um, I'm no longer with Remax. And I said, well, what are you doing now? Mm -hmm. And he said, nothing. I said, do you still have your broker's license? He said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went home and, and God said, hey, there it is. Whoa. Incorporate the company and hire him as your broker. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So I mean, that's 
that's different. Listen, I mean, these are things that people don't that's know. That's a hustle. Yeah, mm-hmm. these yeah. are things that people don't know that they, they can do. Yeah, because that's, that's... That's that Charleston. <laughs> that's that Charleston, boy. You've been in Columbia for 10 years. I know Charleston. Now, I'm not going to say all that, but... They ain't going to say all that. Gee, that's that Charleston. There you go, man. <laughs> Listen. I mean, it's different. I mean, it's... It's good that we're having those type of conversations because, just like we said, the listening audience, somebody out there thinking, right, barrier, because we talked right. about barriers, so That's they're thinking, right. I would love to own a real estate company, but I don't have a license, right? Right, And I don't know how to get a, but now you're like, no, you can just incorporate, get your business, and we talked about starting a business, mm-hmm. going through the steps where you create a business and not a hustle, mm-hmm. but you have a business, you just document it, you got all, everything in place. And then you hire a person to do the work and you be the owner. Mm-hmm. And you'd be surprised. I mean, you can actually, with um, the incorporation fees for the state, um, for the Secretary of State and um, and the fees for the Board of Commission, Real Estate Board of Commission, I mean, you're paying less than $1,000 to start a real estate company. Wow. Ooh. Let somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Absolutely. Okay, taking notes. Yes, sir. See, that's what I told y'all. I should be taking notes at home. But this is, hey, there's some good info. Absolutely. There's some good info. So we had the real estate company. But I was reading in your bio that in addition to the real estate company, you was, you had a PR. Either Was it a PR company? I had, yes. I so had tell us about, well. so they told you. So he told you, how did we get... Another door of opportunity that just... Swung open. Just mm-hmm. swung open. Okay. Listen, if you're not available, you 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 won't receive those opportunities. Ooh. If you're working a nine to five, you're not going to receive those opportunities. You have to be available. Mm-hmm. And I'm not telling anybody to go out there and quit their job. Mm-hmm. But you have to be available. Right. You know, one of the things that I learned when I first came to Atlanta was how to network. I came here in the mid-80s, uh, mid, uh, mm-hmm. and so um, I think you were talking about the beautiful restaurant yeah. off air. Mm-hmm. That was one of the places that you went to network. That's where the old money hung out. Mm-hmm. You went to places like Pascal's. That's where a lot of the politicians and, and wealthy people mm-hmm. hung, especially us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where they hung out. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to network, those were some of the places that you went. Wow. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so I was t- I was taught how to, you know, how to go to those places, and um, opportunities would just you know avail themselves to me. Mm-hmm. So I was the uh, PR consultant for the um, Georgia Black Chamber of Commerce. It was mm. the door that opened. Wow. Uh huh. And um, and then shortly after that. Um, became um, a PR consultant for one of uh, the politicians in um, in DeKalb. He was running for office in DeKalb County. And he was running against uh, one of the sitting commissioners. And one of my jobs was to go to every town hall meeting that that particular commissioner was at, because he wasn't mm-hmm. a very good spe- speaker. And so I would go and ask very tough questions. They knew he couldn't answer the question. So every time I would come in the door, they're looking like, oh, here she comes again. Mm -hmm. But that was just my job. That's what I did. And so um, one day, I decided that I was no longer going to work for that Mm -hmm. particular um, gentleman that was running for our office. There were some things that I I did not like. and um, But I ran into the commissioner who was Mm -hmm. already in office, and he said, "What, what is it? Why don't you like me? And I said, it's not that I don't like you, I'm just doing my job. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you really ought to do your research about me and then come and work for me. Wow. And I went home that weekend, I thought about it, you know, I did look into who he was. And before I could make the call, his wife had actually called me and said, my husband said that he ran into you and he really would like for you to come and work for us. Mm -hmm. And so he was a sitting commissioner and I became um, his... um, uh, PR consultant, um, and also represented uh, five of the other commissioners that was sitting at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the takeaway is make yourself available. Mm-hmm. Be available. Because mm-hmm. if you make yourself available, that don't, but we said, hey, disclaimer, don't leave, <laughs> don't walk in there tomorrow. <laughs> don't, don't quit your job. Don't talk about the Daily Bread radio show and then you walk in there tomorrow and say, I'm done. Just, have a plan. Make Absolutely. write write it out. Make it plain so that those 
they see it can run to it. So make sure you, you have a plan now because the bills go, everything gonna keep coming. Yep. It's gonna keep coming. So make sure you have a strategy for that. So now we've done the real estate, we've done the PR, we made ourselves available. Now, according again, according to your bio, then around, I think it was what, 2003, mm -hmm. you got what we call the call, right? <laughs> Everybody, and I was telling you about my friend, he said, because when he called me, he's like, yeah, I think I got the call. I'm like, what call? What you talking about? He's like, the call. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So it sounded like you got the call too. I got the call. Okay. I got the call. You got the call. So yeah. tell us about the yeah, call. Yeah, I got the call. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, religion wasn't my thing. Um, I didn't grow up in the church. We went to church, um, you know, holidays, Easter, Easter Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Christmas. Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, the church that we attended was an AME church, you know, so most of the time you didn't understand what was going on anyhow, especially as, as kids. <laughs> you know, we didn't understand what was going on. Our mother would take candies and cookies and stuff, you know, to keep us quiet. Um, so I, I really didn't know anything about the church. Um, but, you know, after being here in Atlanta, the thing to do on Sundays was to go to church. And so I would make sure that I went, you know. Um, and um, but one night I heard God just as plain as day, you know, and he said to me that I have need of you. Mm. And Whoa. listen, there wasn't anybody else in the room, mm. you know, but me. So mm. I knew it was him. And um, I didn't think twice about it. I really didn't. I didn't question it. I didn't think twice about it. Now, I did cry. <laughs> what you? Oh, I ain't even gonna. What was you crying I about? Cry. What was you crying oh, about? Oh, it's silly. It's silly. <laughs> it's silly because you know. Um, all right, I had just started wearing blue jeans. So okay. now you had to go back to the long skirt. And just, and just started wearing blue jeans and just started finding some that I thought I looked good in. And they were low-rise jeans, okay? And so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm, and that's you start crying listen, yeah, when you got the call? I'm thinking, well, you know, most times when you think about the church, you're thinking, you know, you've got to, you're going to lose something. Right. You know, there are things that you're going to lose. You have to give up. You have to give, you have to give up some stuff, right. you know. Be committed to a certain As, Listen, I mean. Most times, that's what you think, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you have to change the way you wear your hair. You got to change mm -hmm. your makeup. You got to change your clothes. You know, I mean, God really isn't concerned about any of that, but that's just what the church tells us. Right. You know, and so, and then I knew other women that were uh, in ministry, and they seemed to be very lonely to me. Mm. Mm. So that's why you were crying. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I was my crying. goodness! Um, yeah, because I really thought that this was, was gonna, that was gonna be my the life. Jeans Listen, and the loneliness. Oh, I thought that was gonna be it. Okay. Um, but you know, um, I went ahead and I went to ministry school, um, and um, after uh, graduating and becoming licensed and ordained, it was like things just took off quickly. Um, I was serving under uh, a pastor, served with uh, that particular church for two years. And um, one day the pastor came uh, up to me after service and she said, um, um, Minister Charmaine, you're going to bring the message on the fourth Sunday. Mm. And I thought, whoa, okay. They never used me to do this before. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. I would do the welcome. You know, right. you know, the cute stuff. I would do. <laughs> Sick and shut in. <laughs> I would do those things. Um, but she was asking me to bring the word, you know. And um, this was a small church. We might, might have had 20 members. Um, and so I asked her if I could invite some people to come. She said yes. Well, I sent out some invitations to some folks. Mm. And on that particular Sunday, the church was packed. Wow. Came to see Charmaine bring the word. They came to see. And uh, needless to say, um, the pastor wasn't pleased. And that's funny. Well, I've heard that yeah. before. Yeah. I heard that in oh. another space by somebody else that told me the same thing. Like, And I, yeah. I was like, why? Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. ask? And then when I do well and I yeah. excel yeah. at doing it, it's like you get the, the passion.
paradox. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not happy, mm -hmm. but I thought you would be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it was quite the contrary. Um, and from that point on, I wasn't used again. Not, I heard that too. Yeah, not even to do the welcome. Got the mic. Yeah. Yeah. So you must have really brought the word. <laughs> they was like, nah, no, no. Nah. House down. You must have just the offering plate must have been running over. Mm -hmm. They just <laughs> uh uh. So I, I I left there. Um, yeah. You know, feeling broken. Wow. And um, and I had made a decision that I wasn't going to um, join another church. Um, I would just visit. As a matter of fact, I thought I was going to be um, become an, an evangelist. And uh, I would be the, um, I'd be the next, um, I, I was going to be the black Paula White. Um, so that's what I thought. Yeah, oh, I was gonna okay. Be, I was just going to travel around and just minister the word. Um, but God had another plan. So I got a phone call one day from um, a pastor who had been recently installed in a church within Conyers. And he uh, asked me, are you still living in Conyers? And I said, yeah. He says, well, you need to come and visit my church. And I said, okay. It was only a couple of minutes away from my home. Right. And um, so I started attending the church, um, not really knowing why I was there. <clears throat> However, I knew God had sent me. Well, two months after being there um, at the church, the, um, the board decided that they were going to release the pastor. Ooh, so let's pause there for a second. Uh -huh. Sounds like we got a call. Call you on the air. This is why I came with the Daily Bread Radio Show. What's your name and where you calling from? Are you there? Yeah. They hung up? Okay. Let's go right to show. Um, well, what I didn't know was uh, it was actually a setup by God. My being there at that time was a setup. For you to take over the church? For me to become the pastor wow. of that church. Yeah. Because when they released that pastor, they no longer had a pastor. And I was the only licensed and ordained minister that they had. And so they asked me if I would then become the pastor. And I cried again. I said, oh, no. I'm but not. you should have been over the jeans by then. What you crying for now? Wait a minute. What you crying for now? I mean, because. Because you, you felt that. We're talking about pastoring. Oh, I know. A I lot like of people, yeah. okay? And we talked about and that with the accountability that comes with oh my stewardship, God. right? Listen, mm -hmm. listen. I mean, you're responsible for the souls of these people, mm -hmm. you know, and I really didn't think I was equipped to do that. I'd never done it before. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, God had already equipped me, yeah. you know, but uh, at the time, I didn't know that, you know, and um, I told him I had to call them back, you know, and I pleaded with God. And he said, absolutely, you have to do it. And so that following Sunday, when I went to church and I stepped into the pulpit, it was like there was a change that mm -hmm. happened. I mean, everything was totally different. The, th the way I saw in the spirit was different. Uh, the things that came out of my mouth was different. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like God had just taken over, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so I pastored that church for uh, about a year and a half until one day. A man of God came, he was a prophet, and he said to me, um, woman of God, your time is up here. And I'm thinking, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I just you, you got get, here. You Things are just, it, you yeah. Get comfortable now. It's, it's just, just starting to get good, you know. <laughs> and, um, and he said to me, he said, the leadership at this church is out of order. Mm. And he was telling the truth. Um, the the board of that church, I mean, they, they weren't taking the things of God very serious. So um, they were season, um, Falcon season holders, uh, ticket holders. And so if, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give you an example. Don't tell me if they were playing the same. They listen, like, hey, listen, not just, the same, not just the same. Wait a minute, hold on, if time out. a whole game. Time out, time out. Are you telling me the board had season tickets to the Falcons and the Falcons ain't even like they ain't like the Steelers. No. Listen. So they ain't like they was winning like that. They wouldn't come to church. Listen. No, they would come and leave early. Take up the offering. <laughs> <laughs> and they were I can't gone. do this show no more, man. <laughs> you said take up the gone. offering and then And they were gone. 
Absolutely. And they they thought we had to get to the tailgate. You got to get that money. <laughs> 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 Hurry up, man. So, get money. Get money. Put your money in there. <laughs> on watch night, when we're in church, getting ready to bring in the new year, they were in Vegas. Wow. What they doing in Vegas? Uh, partying. You know what they're doing in Vegas. No, I'm just saying, I was like, how did from the thousands in Vegas? Like, <laughs> Absolutely. So when the man of God came in and he said that oh the God. leadership was out of order, mm -hmm. and he said God wanted to bring condemnation down on that house, but he couldn't mm -hmm. as long as I was there. Wow. He was blocking it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is deep. Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, I believed what he said. And he, and he said one other thing. He said, I see three graves behind this church. And, and, and when we turned in our resignation, because I had um, four other people that had come and joined the church and they were in leadership with me, when we turned, the, the Saturday, Sunday that we turned in our resignation, it was like things started happening right after mm. that. I mean, within a week we had the first death. Absolutely. I mean, the, the prophet was spot on. And mm. that, you know, we mm. said, oh yeah, it's time to go. And so we, we left there. And God had actually sent me out to start my own church. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the ground up. Yeah. Now, this is what I'm about to say. It's for those who um, have ideas about starting businesses and they're letting fear hold them back. Okay. God sent me out with six people. Six. Only six people. He had not even given us the name of the church. Mm. Um, but he told me to go out and look for a location. I'd never done this before. And so I would just drive around mm -hmm. Conyers. And then one day I was driving down the street and he said to me, look to the left. And I looked to the left and it was an abandoned building. And it had a, a for sale or lease sign. He told me to call the number. I called the number, made an appointment, and went and talked to the gentleman. Now, six people, no money, no nothing, mm -hmm. just moving by faith. And when I sat and talked with the gentleman, he was telling me that the building was for sale for $2.3 million. And if you couldn't buy it, you could lease it for $5,000 a month. Now, there was no way that six mm -hmm. people could pay $5,000 a month nor $2.3 million. Mm -hmm. Hear me. And so, but because God said to me to do this, I figured the problem wasn't mine, it was his. Mm -hmm. Come on. Ooh. Come on, come on. Understand what I'm saying. 2.3 or 5,000. Mm. Okay. Come on. The word says that we have to walk by faith, not mm. by sight. Correct. Mm. If God tells you to do a thing, if he gives you the vision, he's going to make the provision. Come on. Okay. And so when the gentleman told me how much they were charging, they were asking for, for this property, um, it didn't move me at all. And I heard God say to me, tell him that he will finance the, the property. Mm. And I said exactly what God said. And this man looked at me like I was some little crazy fool. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. I didn't move. And he said to me, he says, here are the keys. You need to go and take a look at it. And he put the keys in my hand, and I looked at the keys, and I said to him, you know you're not going to get these back. And he chuckled at me. Mm -hmm. And he said, young lady, go write up a proposal and bring it back to me, and I will give it to my attorneys and let them take a look at it. Look at God. Whoa. Look at well, God told me to offer him 1.3, not that it made a difference. Mm -hmm. We still had six people. And within two weeks, their attorneys were calling us, uh, scheduling a closing, I mean, uh, a closing date. And when I got off the phone with the, I was all excited. Hey, we're getting ready to close on this property. I forgot to ask who was paying the closing costs. And so I called him back and I said, um, sir, who's paying the closing, closing costs? He said, the church. I said, how much is it? He said, 5300 Well, we didn't have $53, let alone 5300 So I had them to move the closing date back about two days. Mm -hmm. Two days to come up with $5,300. On the day of closing, I wasn't there. The owner called and he said, Charmaine, um, we're here at the closing 
um, where are you? And I said, I'm still trying to come up with the 5,300. He said, how much do you have? I said, we came up with 5,000. He said, when you get the other 300, then you come and you sign all the documents. Well, one of the deacons called, one of the six called me and said, Pastor, um, what's going on with the closing? And I said, well, we're almost there. He said, how much are you short? I said, 300. He said, well, I can't leave where I am. I said, where are you? He said, I'm at the VA hospital. I started having some, some problems, and I came to the hospital. Now, my concern became him. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'll come. He said, no, Pastor, I want you to go to my house. My daughter's there. Go into my closet. You'll see a white book. Pull that book out. There'll be some money in it. It was at exactly $300. We close on a $1.3 million building with six people. And, and God was so creative with the financing. Um, the way he did it was we started very low with our payments, and every year it would increase. Now, let me tell you, when we got to the third payment, making the third payment, the financier called me up on the phone. I was looking at my phone when his number came up, and I'm thinking, oh, God, I don't want to answer this call. And uh, God says, no, answer it. He said to me, he says, Charmaine, I don't want you to focus on making the payments. I want you to focus on building the ministry and renovating the building. Whoa. For four years, we didn't have to make a payment. For four years, we did not have to make a payment. Now, wait a minute. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> so if you haven't fear about something, and I know we're getting, we getting short on time, so we definitely got to get in we will. We will. the magazine. We will. But, I mean, just... We got to pause right this, there. This we, is for somebody. This is for definitely yeah. Yeah. somebody. I'm like, I'm taking notes because I'm saying 1.3, and that's just what we was talking. And it's so strange that I would be talking about that in the open, right? So if you all wouldn't even thinking like that, you wouldn't even move. Because 1.3 is scare most people, mm -hmm. especially when you know what's in your account and you can't see it. Mm -hmm. What I call you can't see it's like 1.3. Or making five thousand dollars, and even if you told somebody, we gonna go four years without having to pay a note. That's just mm -hmm. that's abnormal. Mm -hmm. Like what we had talked about before we got on the air. That's mm -hmm. abnormal, right? Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't. It, it takes a certain openness of the mind to be even able to comprehend something like oh, that. Oh sure. The possibility mm -hmm. of coming up out of it, but the fact that you forged ahead yes. and said, "Hey." I'm going to go ahead and take this step because God told me to do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and put it on him. But had you not taken the step, then the other things couldn't open up. It's almost like a trap door. Like you got to step on certain things in order for something to open up. But if you never move, it won't move. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about the magazine. Okay. But the magazine, what, Dang, what you were telling me about the magazine was phenomenal. So I want you to... Tell us about the magazine and what can we expect from the magazine. And we also need to know where can we either, you know, purchase a subscription, where can we buy it off the newsstand. Sure. Give us all of that information. Well, the magazine is called Real Women Atlanta. Um, we call it Real Women because that's who we feature. Ordinary women who are doing extraordinary things. Now, um, the stories that we tell are about women these are real stories about real women who have gone through some real situations, okay? Um, I was sharing with you one of the young ladies that's on the cover. Uh, her story is, is that when she was five years old, she was sexually assaulted by her, her biological father at the age of five. You yeah. Biological. Biological father mm. at the age of five. Um, and so we're telling her story because we know that there are other women that are out there who've been sexually assaulted or who've uh, gone through some domestic violence or some, some tragedy. And through her story, it, it should encourage or em um, empower other women. Right. So these are the stories that we're, we're telling. We're telling stories about, you know, even things about divorce. People don't understand how even divorce, you know, just that, that abandonment, that, you know, being abandoned, feeling that feeling of being abandoned by someone can affect an individual. Um, so we're telling these types of stories. Uh, we've been approached by um, 
about producers who wanted us to feature celebrities, and we've turned them down. This platform is only for the ordinary black woman, mm. I, I must oh. say, the ordinary wow. black woman mm -hmm. who's doing extraordinary things. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So is it a, a monthly, is it? This year we're producing three issues, okay. and then starting January we'll become a, a monthly okay. magazine. Okay. Um, we're using um, a distribution company mm -hmm. that um, distribute to uh, Kroger's mm -hmm. and Publix, um, Food Depot, mm -hmm. so the grocery stores. So when you first enter into the doors of the grocery stores, you know those free magazines that you find there. Right. So we'll be right there in the doors. Those uh, who would like to get a subscription, they can contact us um, at realwomenatlanta.com. Um, or they can uh, email us at realwomenatlanta at yahoo.com. Okay. At Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are, we've already inked the first. So how many stories or what's the layout of the content? Is it just well, a series of different women in the magazine or is it other content like Recipes, oh, yeah. cooking. Oh, yeah, we have we have food, and and the reason why we incorporated that is because we want to also give those that are in business the opportunity to write as well. So um, our contributing writer uh, for fitness, um, she's actually you know in fitness that's her business. Um, we have chefs that write our uh, food section, so we want to make sure that we have opportunities available for the people that are in business to. You know to write articles as well so that's their way of um, marketing their business and okay. each month we change you know our writers wow okay mm -hmm. so the writer doesn't have to write each episode but each i guess you would say each magazine mm -hmm. but each issue that, each yeah issue. and each issue no they don't okay. have to keep writing and and that's good because now yeah. it gives someone else an opportunity and it makes it fresh Oh yeah, absolutely. It makes it fresh. Absolutely. It makes it fresh because sometimes when you're writing columns and you're writing every month, it's like, man, what am I writing about this month? But if you're writing this issue and then you take an issue off, by the time the next issue comes, you got a lot of stuff that you're like, hey, I want to get this out there. Oh, sure. The time of year. Sure. So absolutely. that's great as well. So tell me, but you've been a little humble. We have this place. I know you, you've probably been there. It looks like you've been there. But uh, we call it Humbleia. Right? <laughs> Humbleia. So I think you. I think she's been the humble leader. She's been there. She been there. Because she she was real modest mm -hmm. about the magazine and oh yeah we are featured. But tell them the interest that has already been sparked on a national um, level. Yeah. So that's why I said it, it kind of looks like you've been the humble leader. So <laughs> I'm going to give you the opportunity to well, just restate. Um. Being available. Right. Um, doors, the other doors of opportunities have um, have opened. Um, there is um, another platform um, called uh, Experience on Demand, which is uh, pretty much like um, Netflix or um, Hulu. Uh, Hulu, yeah. Um, Roku. They heard about us, and um, and they are giving us our own uh, network, um, and that network network is going to be called Women in Demand. Mm. And we're going to reach, yeah, we're going to reach over 240 million people mm -hmm. across the world. Woo! Yeah. Listen <laughs> to the name right here. Real Women. Mm -hmm. So remember you had Flip Wilson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, on me. I don't know if we got to do our Geraldine. <laughs> Get on in there, man. We got said 250 million households mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's big. It is. Mm -hmm. That's, it stop is. and think about how many opportunities that's going to uh, give 250? to. 250? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having a, an entire network, um, that will open up more doors for women who, you know, have some content or who thought about having their own show. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be a great opportunity. Because within your well. network, you can have basically like different shows mm -hmm. that are geared towards women. Like you said, you have a fitness show, a cooking show, a 
you know, what are we doing in the workplace show, a professional mm -hmm. show, a comedy show, travel, travel show. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves to travel. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I mean, that's just I mean that in itself is phenomenal. And then the, you know, the leverage that with the magazine, it's mm -hmm. like ads in the magazine yeah. or, you know, that's promoting good. the show on absolutely your absolutely. channel mm -hmm. and vice versa. The ad dollars that are you know could potentially be generated from that as well. And that's that's the platform to be in. And that's why I always say. What we use here, and when you look at social media and the things like um, YouTube and mm -hmm. Facebook Live and YouTube Live, and now you got like on demand platforms, that's really the new wave oh, of where it's going. It's kind of like this is the, the way I look at it is like when we transitioned from the horse and buggy to the car, mm -hmm. right? Or when we went from, you know, that big, bulky computer to personal computers. Mm -hmm. That's really the space that we're in right now. And, and again, the biggest thing that I like about it, you, you have no gatekeeper, right? right? So you can create your content, you can make it as outrageous as you want it, the FCC is not tapping you, you don't have to go through all of these, you know, execs at the networks and things like that, you can just really be the owner of your creative vision. And the key word there being ownership, because we talked about that Absolutely. off the air, and I think a lot of people kind of lose sight of that, or they just don't know that some of the people that we see Mm -hmm. in the media don't own their content mm -hmm. that's right right so just the fact of being able to have ownership because we've talked about that before in the show like most shows on network tv you know once you get to 100 episodes you can go into syndication mm -hmm. so just imagine what syndication would look like on demand right right so now you don't have to do as much work because you own the intellectual property now you can take all of those shows from season one two and three and run it again and every time that you run it you get getting you know, revenue generated from that's that. That's right. So that's power. It is. That's power. It is. That's power. That's God. So that's Absolutely. what you should be crying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what should make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> right? We, like, we fast the jeans and low and yeah. like 250 million episodes. Oh. <laughs> that should make you cry, but that's a, I mean, that's a phenomenal journey. And, and you're not finished. So what do you see? What is Charmaine? Oh, Mossy right. in the future. Well, we've already got some um, some interest from other cities. Mm -hmm. The magazine was actually designed to be a franchise. That's why it's called Real Women Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We're based here, so we're we're, Sorry. we're publishing here first. Um, but we've already got some interest from Houston and uh, from Chicago, mm -hmm. and so we'll we'll go into other cities as well. Wow, wow, that's big. So. Like I said, phenomenal story. So tell everybody where they can. I know you told us about realwomenatlanta.com and then realwomenatlanta at yahoo.com. Yes. What is, are you on Twitter? No, I don't. Yeah, you I don't. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, you a I, network executive. I don't tweet. You a, oh, okay, we go. Hey, you a network exec. So what? what Listen, and then what we other also social media? Work. I know you got a direct link, we but have I'm like Facebook. We're okay. We're, we're on Facebook. Well, tell us about that because um, you know people want to know. Like, how can I? You know, we want to make sure the women out there know where to reach out to you, where to go. We got real you know, women. I see Atlanta. my daughter on. I see my <laughs> my wife on. My youngest daughter. So real women Atlanta magazine. Okay. Um, is our Facebook page. Um, but we also have a group page mm -hmm. and um, one of the things that we found right after we did our, our launch party was um, there was a, a need for a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. The women actually, the women at the launch party who attended our launch party actually created a sisterhood. That's how much excitement there was. And so we saw that there was a need for a group page. And within a week, our group page had grew to well over 1,500 women. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know. In two weeks. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things that we do, again, we allow the women uh, to have um, opportunities to educate each other on their businesses or their craft. Mm -hmm. So they could do, they can go live within the group. Um, mm -hmm. If they're um, a makeup artist, they can actually demonstrate, you know, um, and teach the other women about makeup, mm -hmm. um, fitness, finances. Um, and so it's rather than just posting a whole bunch of stuff, you mm -hmm. know, within the group, we want to educate them. Wow. 
That's powerful. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good motto, right? Yeah. yeah. Educate, yeah. motivate, elevate. Mm -hmm. I want to write that one down. <laughs> that sounds like a good one, right? Translate. Oh, we yeah, we use that. That's our motto. Yeah, translate, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look at you, yeah. man. Yeah. But um, Charmaine, we definitely, um, so we have all your contact info, and what we're going to do, we'll make sure that we put it on our uh, Facebook page. I'll put it out on Twitter, because I know a lot of people yeah, and a lot of women. Yeah, go tweet me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I, I think we have been missing out. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the stuff that I've learned in two or three weeks from a global standpoint mm -hmm. is just, and being able to tap into things that we couldn't, otherwise tap into. I mean, you can outreach to people that you would never be able to outreach to. And just like, right. make a comment or have the insert yourself into a conversation. And the thing I like about it, it has to be short because it's only 140 characters. Right. Mm -hmm. So it can't be this long, drawn out dissertation about something, but you, you could get your point across and just get to the point, right? Like, hey, you know, this is good for everybody, right. period. So when you see that all links to things and the thing that I found that's good leverage is you can take your Facebook links and just put the link into Twitter and just shoot it out and then who knows where it goes because people are starting to like follow me on Twitter and I, like I said I've been doing like two weeks but the thing that I'm trying to do is just educate just right. like what you said I just put stuff out there about personal finance savings credit budgets investing you know, opportunities, things to look for, things to hurt, seen, this, that, and other. And I think, you know, with Real Women Atlanta, that's something that's powerful. Right. I mean, and to be on a network, people are like, where, okay, where can I tune in or where can I get it? We need to be able to educate and be in different spaces. Because I know me, I was like, I don't want to do all of that. But it's certain people, what I found on social media is this, it's certain people that are on Facebook that are not on Twitter, mm -hmm. that are not on YouTube, that are not on Instagram. And then it just, you just have to determine which platform you want to be on. Right. Not all five or all six, but I think if you have a core group of social media, because to me, that's the other way from a communication standpoint that everything is going to, because like with me, I was like, I don't need to be doing that. But then as I'm looking at ESPN, because I'm a huge sports fan, right. Every person that comes onto ESPN, it says their name, mm -hmm. and then it has their either their Twitter handle or their Facebook or whatever under their name. Whereas before, it used to just have their name, Joaquin Thompson Sr. But now it's like, oh, this is where they are. So just something to think about, but you're already doing, you've got a direct connection. You, I, I, just something to think about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just something to think about. But um, definitely on behalf of the Daily Bread Radio Show, and Sandy Pruitt as well. I know you said she's on your team, but she's on my team as well. But I um, want to definitely thank you for taking the time to come out. Thank and for you. those of you all that don't know, it, it was storming, it's raining, so special kudos to Charmaine, because I was thinking she may not make it, because I, I <laughs> you know, we can be transparent on this show. I sure was thinking about that. <laughs> I have a one second, I thought I was, That's sad. I said, to nah, your own I said, show, to your I said, own nah, show. nah, because Charmaine is coming. But no, nah, they know that's a joke. They know that's a joke because <laughs> it's been one time we had a real bad storm and I couldn't get here. Mm -hmm. I stopped at a Dunkin' Donuts and did the show from Dunkin' Donuts. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ain't. You no. in. No, I'm in. Yeah. I'm, hey, it, it's nothing stopping me. When I went to Seattle a couple weeks ago, right. three hour time difference, mm -hmm. we did it from Seattle. Wow. So we, hey, awesome. it's no, we do no excuses here. Every Thursday we here, unless, we already said, unless I'm infirmed, meaning I'm in an acute care hospital in a situation that I can't do social media. Because even if I was there, I would still do some social media. You still try. Right? I still, still try. Sweet. Oh, I still have my phone and be like, you still try. hey, y'all, uh, y'all, I'm on. But thankfully we haven't been there yet. Hopefully we're not going and hopefully we're going to stay in good health. So we can be in good wealth and we can continue to educate people Amen. and just grow this seed and this charge that he's put on my life because I, I truly believe that this this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right. with exactly what he's given me, the tools and everything. And I'm just walking it out. That's all I don't worry about because, I mean, I got some of the best, I got some of the best audience members, the breadheads in the world. They keep me going, I mean, through the weekdays. 
somebody always sends something to just give me that confirmation. Right. right. Like, hey, I heard you, or it was helpful, or you just don't know, or you really touched me. And, you know, I had a friend of mine see Pat on. Pat was writing a testimonial for this website that we're doing for the Daily Bread Radio Show. And the thing about, I had another friend of mine that's a minister, and I had him, <laughs> oh, I know Skilly on. I had him write me a testimonial. Man, it was so deep. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, man, mm -hmm. I know, I mean, it's just, it's just humbling. Humbleia. You know, humbleia, that's why we go there. Right. When people say things that are so, you know, heartfelt, and they're supporting your vision, right. and you're doing things, and which I know you know, going from the six people and doing the 1.3, and now that you have a new vision and the experience and everything, it's just, it's tremendous when somebody says, hey, I believe in what you're doing. Right. Right? right. I see what you're doing, and I'm going to tune in. And, and especially every week, because I always, that's always amazing to me as well. It's like mm -hmm. every Thursday, people remember to tune into the Daily Bread Radio Show. Yeah. I mean, that's just in itself is powerful. So right, it's huge. Definitely, um, but we're going to have to have you on again, because I know we, we talked about the network, and um, we would love to, can we, I guess we can get on the network. We'll get on the We'll yeah, work it out. Yeah, 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 we'll absolutely. do a show on the network. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we have to come up with a name. <laughs> the, the network. Uh, huh? The network. The network. This is a network exactly. That? That's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's the name of the show. The he network. said call it the network. See, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. We're going to be a little bit more creative than that. So, so uh, man, we appreciate you coming again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for, you, so you know, Brave in the Storm. Raheem. Yes, sir. You can take us out of here. Breadhead, hey, we love you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. We'll see you all the same place this time next week. Watch this. We'll post some information on the site. And look, <laughs> and you'll be seeing me out in, in Twitterville. So if you, <laughs> hey man, I'm just saying that's what I'm doing. Practicing, practice. Oh, see there you go, there you go, man. There you go, there you go. But um, yeah, we appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great week, great weekend, and uh, make sure you do that saving because we're gonna stay on that for the next ninety days. All right, appreciate you, bro. Man, that was awesome, man, bro. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Man, did you yeah. get the picture? Yeah. Oh, we gone. A one. <laughs>